What is up, champions of Azeroth? This is the Chig coming at you with another World of Warcraft Season of Discovery video. Today we're going to be talking about Paladin PvP. But before we get started, go and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell notification icon so you get notified every time we have a new video. I'm going to have timestamps for each spec. I'm going to go over gear and talents for each spec and some notable things. So let's hop right into it. Let's start with the big old elephant in the room, Holy. So I love Holy Paladin. I'm going Holy on my character. I'm going to be AoE grinding as Holy. I'm going to be Holy, Holy, Holy all the time. Until we get dual spec and then who knows. So if you can get them. Spell power goggles extreme. If you cannot get them. You can get a... Uh, little different one i need to take off this filter hold on just one moment all right so if you can't get those you can get basically any of these other ones so what i would do i'd probably try to get something with stamina so bright eye goggles would be good uh, spark metal coif just to get the armor green tinted goggles is probably easy because that's like the easiest one to get right so let's go with green tinted goggles. And then after that, as you can see, the majority of everything I have is greens. And I'm going to tell you why. So, of the eagle, your two most important stats in PvP, in my opinion, are going to be not only stamina, but also intellect. So we have lots of of the eagle things equipped, right? All right, so spectral necklace of the eagle. Bang. Sentry shoulder guards of the eagle, right? We have a lot of these. So, um, and we're also trying to wear as much mail as we can because we want to have our armor up for being able to take less melee damage, right? So we're trying to lean into the strengths of the paladin. Remember, we've got a stun. We've got hand of freedom. We've got a couple other things. Um, we're going to be able to keep our mana up when we talk about the runes and things. So... There's going to be a lot of different things that we're going to be able to take into consideration when we're doing this. Uh, caretaker's cape. Super duper 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 duper. Where did it go? That's the PvP one. I would grab that because it's got stamina, spirit, and healing. All right. Um, you can also just grab something of healing if you want. Um, you're going to get a little more healing that way, but I would stick with the PvP cape. Uh, spiked chain breastplate of the eagle. It's where you want to live. You want to have that stam and that int. Um, banded Bracers of Healing. So this is one of those slots where you can get more stam and more int if you want it. But I took a couple of the places where the smaller stats lived and made them of healing, right? Um, also keep in mind, not all of your slots have of healing available in mail. So that's also something to take into consideration. So we've got the... Bracers of Healing with an Intellect Enchant. We've got a Weapon of Healing. I mean, you can get something of Healing or you can get something of the Eagle. Obviously, you're going to want one hander and a shield for this, so just get something of Healing. Um, get a Shield of Healing or the Seed Kellaud Buckler from Wailing Caverns. This is huge. This is a lot of Intellect, good armor, good block, right? Then you are going to grab Gloves of Healing. Um, this is a... Flex spot, you can get of healing or you can get stam and int here um, because this is a good stat allocation piece. Bracer or belt of healing, same thing. If you want to get more stam and int, you can get more stam and int here. Uh, Sentry's leggings of healing. This is the biggest stat spot that I put into healing, um, mainly because just to get my base healing up as much as I could without sacrificing too many spots. And then you've got some boots of the eagle. Um, Lore Keeper's Ring from PvP gives you healing, damage, stamina, and MP5. Can't beat it. And then whatever Ring of the Eagle you can get in your off spot. Acolyte's Pearl from the Raid if you can get it. And then you're going to try to pick up the um, Insignia of the Alliance. Um, you can also, if you don't want to get the Insignia of the Alliance, there is the, um, what's it called? Rune of Duty, Stamina, Health for 5, um, whichever you want to pick up there. Um, so let's hop over to the Talents. So in the talents for holy, divine intellect, five out of five, give you 10% more intellect, just bigger mana pool, um, bigger mana pool, more crit, 
Spiritual Focus gives your Flash of Light and Holy Light spells a 70% chance to not lose casting time when you take damage. That's huge when you're PvPing. Um, we all know about pushback. Pushback stinks. Healing Light increases your healing of Flash of Light and Holy Light by 12%. This is amazing. Um, Consecration. This is not a required spot. I'm going to get this just to kind of help DPS while I'm in melee range because I'm going to be in melee range a lot. Um, improve lay on hands just to get a little bit of extra armor um, and to reduce the cooldown a little bit. And then illumination, chance on crit to get back some of your mana cost. Um, so over here on the runes, we'll talk about all the runes and I'll tell you which ones I picked and why. We've got Aegis, increase your block value by 30%, damaging melee range attacks against you. Have a 10% chance to increase your chance to block by 30%, last 10 seconds for 5 blocks, not cumulative with readout. Divine Storm, an instant weapon attack that causes 110% of weapon damage up to 4 enemies within 8 yards. Divine Storm heals up to 3 party or raid members, totaling 25% of the damage caused. Horn of Lordaeron, you're going to be buffing people, so I mean, you can use this if you want. Meh. Um, this is Horn of Winter for Paladins. And then Seal of Martyrdom fills you with Holy Spirit. Uh, each of your melee attacks deal extra weapon damage to three nearby targets. Obviously, this got changed. It's not that anymore. But um, where I'm at is I'm going to either be using Aegis just for survivability or Divine Storm to be able to help DPS. So either one of these. Um, Aegis, if you are anticipating big damage and people actually being smart and switching over to you. Divine Storm, if you want to help your party out and be a little more DPS, and obviously you're going to be cleaving a little bit. But since you're using a one-hander, Divine Storm is not going to be as effective. In your leg spot, um, Avenger Shield, Pearls of Holy Shield, you can slow people, it deals damage, really good. Uh, Divine Sacrifice, wouldn't use this in PvP because it makes you take more damage, um, and we don't, want to, we don't want our healers to get taken out in PvP. Exorcist, this would be good if it didn't have a cast time. Eh. It is what it is. Um, inspirational Exemplar. Your inspiring presence periodically dispels fear and sleep effects from nearby party members. This is a good one. This is what I currently have selected. And then Rebuke if you want the Interrupt. So um, what I would suggest is either Rebuke for the Interrupt, Inspirational Exemplar to be a Walking Tremor Totem, or Avenger Shield. So Avenger Shield is going to let you deal a little bit of DPS. It's going to help you um, peel for people. It's going to help keep them slowed. It's going to help you kite. I think you should live there. I think Avenger Shield is going to be a good pickup, and you don't have to have a weapon swap macro like you're going to have to have for the other pick up, uh, the other specs that we're about to talk about. And then the hand rune. Beacon of Light, can you use this? Yes. Is it going to get dispelled? Also, yes. Is your target going to die and then you have to waste mana switching it to somebody else? Also, yes. So, my two pennies is to keep your mana up and to help DPS, Crusader Strike. It's going to be amazing. This is going to be a fun way to PvP. I think this is going to be an incredible way to just set up your character to have a good time and to just chill out and do battlegrounds and do world PvP and just be as annoying as possible. This is going to be an awesome way to do that. Obviously, you can switch over to Divine Storm. If you have it set up like this, this is also a way you can use this to AoE grind. This is also going to be effective for that, right? Like, you can do it this way. Um... I mean, you might move a couple of the points around so you can get some more damage on your Shield of Righteousness and stuff, but, like, you can do it this way, and it's going to be a lot of fun, right? So, let's go ahead and hop right into the Protection. Um, so, I'm only going to go over the Protection gear once because I have the Prot gear and the Ret gear set the same. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of greens here, too. Uh, Spark Metal Coif comes from a quest. Um... It's a level 32 quest, requires level 20 to get it. You're going to have to have some friends help you, but you are going to be able to get that. Um, so that is going to give you strength and spirit and a big chunk of armor. It's going to be awesome. Spectral Necklace of the Bear. We just want strength and stamina. That's where we're living, right? Um, obviously, you can switch some of these um, bear pieces for tiger pieces if you want some agility for some crit. Uh, but for the most part, I'm stacking bear because I want as much HP as I can get. And I want as much strength as I can get because I'm going to try to be a bursty boy. Um, elite Shoulders, same thing, Strength Stamina. Um, phalanx Cloak of the Bear, Strength Stamina. Um, if you are a Blacksmith, Shifting Silver Breastplate, it's just going to make your attackers take more damage. It's going to give you more hit. It's going to give you more strength. It's going to give you more stamina. If you want to spend the money, you can get the Shining Silver Breastplate if you're not a Blacksmith. 
However, I recommend going to Wailing Caverns and just farming the mutant scale breastplate. One less strength, one less stamina. It's just easy to get there. Um, again, we've got of the bear here, five strength enchant. Um, so Varigan's Fist. Let's look at this. Um, Varigan's Fist is a quest chain for paladins that you can get at level 20. It's item level 22. You can do this solo. However, some of these quests are dungeon, um, done in dungeons. It's going to be worth it. Um, you should do it. It's going to be great. This weapon has really good DPS. It's got really good stats. It's got a decent attack speed. Like This is going to be good for you. So I recommend grabbing this weapon. Um, obviously, there are some other uh, things you can get. Um, the Mega Chopper is going to give you a little more strength. Like That's fine, but... As far as like weapon DPS goes, this has got a higher damage range. It's the same speed. It's got int and stamina on it instead of strength and agility. Like that's what I would suggest getting. Um, the other one I would suggest if you don't have that yet is grabbing this quest from the wetlands, um, ancient war sword using that cause it's almost as good. Um, so pick that up. Obviously, some of these other ones are going to be awesome. Like, Fathom Blade is going to be amazing if you get it, but who knows? That's in the raid. Um, Gauntlets of the Bear with Strength. That's what we're doing. Cobron's Grasp. These are just amazing. Like, I'm not going to replace these with anything with stamina just because this belt is great. Um, this pair of pants, the reason I have it selected is because it comes from the Dead Mines quest. So, you're basically guaranteed to be able to get this. So... Grab that one. Hulking leggings, you can grab those. Leggings of the Fang, those are also fine. Um, Lambent scale leggards, like any of these are fine, right? Um, just look around and see what you can get your hands on. Um, I doubt you're going to be able to get some of these, but some of these you are going to be able to get. So just keep your eyes out for anything with strength and stam, um, strength and agility for your pants. Um, just grab a green of the bear for your boots. Uh, protector's band, this is the PvP ring. So you're going to grab that um, as soon as you hit Honored with Silverwing Sentinels. And then you are going to go kill Baron Silverlane until you have Silverlane's Family Seal because Strength Stam is amazing. Um, you're going to grab the Avengers Void Pearl if you can um, in the raid. And then in this last slot, you are going to grab your PvP Trinket. So let's hop over to the Talents. Um, the only reason I'm even suggesting doing a prot spec at all is to give your party Blessing of Kings. Um, you can get some hit, you can um, get your Blessing of Protection down two minutes, and you can get some more armor. These are all good things, but the whole purpose is to get Blessing of Kings. If you do this, grab Blessing of Kings, throw five points into Divine Strength, just to make sure you hit a little harder, and this is where you're going to be. So 5 out of 5 improved Devo Aura, 3 out of 3 Precision, 2 out of 2 Guardian's Favor, and then 1 in Blessing of Kings, and then 5 out of 5 Divine Strength. And then over here, we've already went over all the runes, so what I'm going to suggest is Divine Storm. You're going to be using a two-hander. It's just going to help with your burst. The Leg Rune. Um, I highly recommend, since you're trying to be a DPS, to use Avenger Shield. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a macro that switches to a sword and a shield, whatever sword and board you have, cast Avenger Shield, and then immediately you're going to switch back to your two-hander. Like, there's just, there's just two button presses. Bang, you did it. Bang, you got your two-hander back. Like, that's all you're going to be doing. That's all it's going to be for. Um, this is going to help us keep from getting um, kited as much because it's going to daze our target. It's going to help us with burst. And it's just a ranged attack, right? Like, it's going to help us out. So... We don't really care about the bouncing, just that it dazes them for 10 seconds and that it does some good damage. Um, it's going to be super easy to pop it over, pop it, pop back to your two-hander. Um, Exorcist, this is going to be good versus like Metamorphosis Warlocks, but, you know, and their pets, but like, cool, this has a cast time in vanilla. We don't really want to be casting spells, especially when people can move around and things, right? Like, it might be okay to pick this up on like a Holy Paladin and like, you know, just cast it at people from the back line. But the way I'm going to play Holy Paladin, we're not doing that. Um, your other option is to pick up Rebuke just for being able to interrupt. But I still think Avenger Shield is going to be better because I'd rather be able to daze than interrupt. Um, and then Divine Sacrifice and Inspir Inspirational Exemplar are kind of non-starters for Prot. 
And then your hand rune, 100% crusader strike. It's going to give you back mana. It's going to give you um, a button to press, and it's going to give you damage. So um, that's where I think you should be living if you are going to be prot for PvP. Um, this is literally just to give your party blessing and kings. It's going to be strong. It's going to help you out. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about retribution. So I'm not going to go over the gear here because I already went over the gear, right? Um, so let's talk about the talents. So here, uh, five out of five improved blessing of might. So you don't really have to worry about your mana consumption when you're PVPing because typically you're not going to live long enough for that to matter. So, and we're going to be in a super bursty meta, so it's fine. We also have other ways to get back mana, so it's it's good. Um, improve judgment. We're going to get our judgment uh, cooldown down by two seconds. Is just going to help us deal more damage. Improve Seal of the Crusader. Increases the melee attack power bonus of your Seal of the Crusader and holy damage. Increase your judgment of the Crusader by 15%. Um, this is just going to help us out in the long run. It's going to help us get a little more damage on our... So you're going to Seal Crusader, Judge Crusader, switch to Righteousness, and you're going to Bonk with Righteousness. You're going to Judge with Righteousness, and that's going to keep Crusader up, right? Um, you can also, if you like, do that, but switch over to command. So command is going to be helping you out. It's going to be dealing extra damage. So, um, if you want to get command, you're not going to use righteousness. You're going to use command instead, but you're still going to seal judge. Uh, you're going to seal crusader, judge crusader, and then start doing command after that. Um, so you're going to put two points into conviction, just a little bit more crit. Um, you're going to put one point into Seal of Command. It gives a Paladin a chance to deal additional Holy Damage equal to 70% of normal weapon damage. Only one Seal can be active on the Paladin at a time. Unleashing its energy will deal this much damage and this much more if the target is stunned or incapacitated. You have a stun, use it, burst people down. Like, we are going to be able to delete people inside of our Hammer of Justice, I do believe, and it is going to be a lot of fun. Um... Pursuit of Justice, just get your movement speed up. Does not stack with other movement speed increasing effects. And then you can move this point wherever you want, but just one point in eye for an eye. Uh, just to make casters casting against you take a little more damage when they hit you. Um, if they crit you anyway. Um, you can move this around. You can reduce the strength and agility of your target. You can get 1% more, more crit. You can basically do whatever you want with that point. Um, so let's hop over back into... Actually, no. Um... You could also, if you don't want Pursuit of Justice, which I would highly recommend, you could take these last five points and put them into Divine Strength. That's the other thing you could do. I wouldn't, but you could. Um, all right, so let's talk about the runes. Divine Storm. No brainer. We are just trying to be as bursty as possible. So Divine Storm. An instant weapon attack that causes weapon damage up to four enemies within eight yards. Heals three party raid members. Bang. We got that. Avenger Shield, same thing as I was talking about with the Protection Paladin. You're just going to have a sword and board. You're going to have a hot swap weapon macro. Bang. Throw your shield. Bang. Back to your two-hander. Um, there's also going to be, you know, if you're fighting a uh, a melee and you're taking big damage and you need to, to cool it off a little bit, there's no reason not to switch over to your sword and board and fight them like that for a second. You know, get get your feet under you. You know, you're, you're allowed to switch around to take less damage, and I would recommend doing that. Um, other than that, like you could pick up rebuke, but I'm thinking for burst shenanigans and to not get kited, we're going to be doing Avenger shield. And then on your hand rune, you're going to be using crusader strike. Gives you back mana, gives you another button to push and gives you uh 75% weapon damage. So basically you're going to judge when you're on in, you're going to switch shield command. You're just going to, as soon as you get in melee range, you're just going to pop everything you got. And they're either going to fall over or you're going to auto attack them a couple of times and then you're going to do it all again. And I think this is just going to be super fast paced gameplay and we are going to be just dunking on people as rep paladins. Um, anyway, that's all three specs. If you have any more questions, please leave them down in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in Azeroth.